These are the first moments of chaos following a massive bomb blast inside a Baghdad market last week, captured on amateur video. It is a scene of utter devastation. At least 78 people were killed as they shopped for the evening meal. This just one incident in a week of attacks that's left more than 250 people dead. The worst violence in more than a year here. Iraq's Prime Minister appealed for national unity, even as he celebrated the withdrawal of U.S. combat troops from Iraqi cities and towns. Maliki has made no secret of his delight that from June 30th, just two days away, U.S. forces will mostly be confined to bases outside of urban areas. In the countryside, they can still operate as normal. But under the security agreement the U.S. made with Maliki's government, American troops will need Iraqi permission to enter the cities. Today in Baghdad, terrorists took advantage of the bad weather to target a U.S. convoy, one of their last opportunities to strike at American troops before they mostly disappear from the city streets. The attack left six Iraqis wounded. Civilian casualties, one reason many Iraqis are glad to see the U.S. go. But the violence leading up to the June 30 deadline has raised doubt in the minds of many here, fearful of what will follow the U.S. withdrawal. Exactly how the agreement will work is still somewhat unclear to the forces who have to abide by it. Or as a senior U.S. officer told me, there's still a lot of gray area. Lara Logan, CBS News, Baghdad. Joining me now for more on the U.S.'s new role in Iraq, we turn to the U.S. Ambassador in Baghdad, Christopher Hill. Welcome, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much. We just heard from Lara Logan that the violence in Iraq is the worst it's been in more than a year. Is moving the troops out of Iraqi cities an irreversible decision, or could they be going back in? Well, first of all, there has been violence in Iraq lately, but I think if you look at the overall trends, not just look at it, uh, you know, comparing one day to another, but overall trends, you see that uh, violence in, in this year, 09, is considerably less. And what we're doing, really, with this, with this move is to comply with our obligations of the security agreement that we reached with the Iraqis. We think we're, we are certainly ready to make this move, and most importantly, we believe the Iraqi forces are ready to take over this mission. But what would it take, sir, if the violence does continue to get worse? Is there any possibility that U.S. troops could be going back in? You know, in addition to being the world's greatest fighting force, I'd say American forces have also become the world's greatest trainer. And they've been working very hard with the Iraqis to make sure the Iraqis can take up this mission. So we have every confidence that they'll be able to do so. So I don't think there's any need to speculate on what happens if things get rough. We know that things will be, will be difficult at times, but I think we are, we are really ready to move forward on this. Some analysts worry that with the U.S. troops moving out of the Iraqi cities, there will be a power vacuum and that that vacuum could be filled by forces loyal to Iran. Is that something that concerns you? Well, again, if there were a power vacuum, that would suggest the Iraqi forces are not ready for the mission. In our judgment, they are ready, and they're looking forward to taking on the missions. U.S. Ambassador to Iraq, Christopher Hill in Baghdad, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.